Hi everyone, it's Chris from Zero Fox 3D. Um, now, I've got something new to show you. I've finally done it. I've made an external uh, enclosure. Um, but, uh, before we begin, I, um, I recorded this video last week, but it was an absolute car crash because I do not like doing this. Um, not comfortable in front of the camera at all. So, uh, this time I'm just going off the top of the dome, shall we say. So, um, if I ramble too much, stick me on 1.5 speed um, and hopefully it won't uh, it won't be too tortuous shall we say um, right so um, if you've never been here before um, I've been making cases for mesh tastic devices um, or mesh core devices even uh, for about a year now um, if you don't know what that is um, mesh tastic mesh core are off-grid messaging um, solutions. So think being able to send a message between devices without an internet connection. I'll um, put some links in the description that explain it better than I could. Um, but all of my cases until now are these ones. Um, and these are mainly designed to either sit on your desk or be carried around with you. Um, what I don't have is a external uh, enclosure, so something that goes on a pole on top of a building, etc., or strapped to a tree, um, and that is what Hermes is. Um, so, if you look at the market, what's available, um, there are off-the-shelf solutions for external enclosures, but they um, they tend to be a little on the expensive side, shall we say? Um, so, Voltaic enclosure sells a really well-designed one. Same with Altavox Rack themselves have. Uh, an enclosure now as well, um, but Hermes is designed uh, to be simple, um, easy to deploy, you'll be able to put one together in about five minutes and you don't have to sell a vital organ to be able to buy the damn thing. Um, so it sells for £48, which is about $60, 60 euros. You should be able to build a complete node uh, with a solar panel for around the hundred pound, hundred hundred dollar, hundred and thirty dollar rather, hundred and thirty euro mark. So as with all my other cases, the concept is the same. Uh, you basically add your board, your batteries, and your antenna. Now with Hermes, you have a solar panel as well that you have to add. Um, I'll go over that uh, in a bit more detail in a bit. Um, but basically, you can choose your own own, own solar panel. Um, the hardware in it is essentially the Rack 19007 or the Rack 19003. Uh, that's the most energy efficient board uh, you can get. The batteries, it takes four 18650 cells, which I think gives you up to about 14,000 milliamp of capacity, which is pretty huge. Battery life wise, uh, in my tests with a, I think it's a six watt panel, um, I was losing one or 2% a day on some days uh, in pretty, below optimal conditions in British weather in February, shall we say. So it could effectively run infinitely, I believe, uh, but it will depend on the panel that you use um, and the weather conditions. There are two antenna variants available. You've got the big boy uh, N-type uh, for N-type antennas, uh, and then you have the SMA uh, antenna variants as well. Um, in terms of mounting options, I've tried to cover all the different scenarios you could have. So if we talk about pole mount, um, with the larger N-type antennas, you tend to have a pole mount on the antenna. And so in this scenario, um, Hermes mounts directly to the antenna. Uh, that's it, no other, no other mounting point. Smaller N-type antennas that don't have um, uh, the actual mount on them, um, you can install a mounting plate onto the back of Hermes and then using some whacking ripping zip ties that I include, you can then go and mount it to a pole. With SMA, you, you basically, with the SMA to mount to a pole, you always put the mounting plate on the back and again, the big zip ties to then mount it to a pole. Um, covering other scenarios, if you want to mount it to say a drain pipe or a tree, um, the actual case itself has loads of cable tie points all the way around. So you can in theory strap it to a drain pipe, uh, a tree, pretty much anything really. Now in terms of the solar panel, uh, there are loads of these panels available for, I think these are for security cameras, and doorbells. Now basically what you do is, um, 
Uh, the cable that they terminate to is generally a USB cable. All you do is cut, the, cut that cable off the end, um, that connector, and I include in the kit um, the solar cable uh, that attaches to the rack board. Now you don't need to solder it. Uh, I include these little crimp connectors. So it's literally just a case of sticking in your red wire, sticking in the red wire, and then squeezing this with a pair of pliers, uh, and that crimps the cables together. Um, there are then cable tie points within the case uh, that allow you to secure the cable to make sure there's no cable strain. Now, when it comes to the actual design of the unit, um, it's quite simple. There are three pieces. There's a front, there's a back, and then there's a base. Um, there is a cu couple of custom TPU gaskets uh, that make sure everything's watertight. Um, and then you have um, the PCB switch that is uh, designed uh, as part of Flexo. Um, the other thing to note is all of the connectors, uh, so USB port, uh, the power switch, etc. They're all exposed um, through the bottom uh, of the enclosure, so you know there can be no water ingress to them. Um, there's cable tie points at the bottom as well, so that you can run. You know, if if you want to run it off 24/7 power, you can run your USB cable up, cable tie it, um, and you can do that with the USB cable if you want data access as well, maybe for updating firmware. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a completely weatherproof design, uh, PTG plastic resistant to temperature and UV. So I'm going to show a full set of uh, build instructions that I recorded last week in a moment. Um, but Hermes is actually shipping in batches, uh, semi-assembled. Um, so Hermes actually arrives like this with the switch and the battery box uh, and the cables, um, the, 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 the antenna connector already installed. Um, so you, dead simple to put together. You basically just stick your board in, stick your batteries in, bang, uh, six screws in the back, tighten the two screws at the bottom and you're, you're essentially done. Um, I will, it will be available for free on uh, printables and I'll be selling the hardware kits with all of the cables, etc. Uh, for anyone that prints it, uh, prints it themselves. Also for those in the UK, I do actually have a supplier for the batteries this time. Uh, available on Amazon, the high quality cells. Um, that link will be in the uh, product description. But that's Hermes. Um, thanks for watching. Um, and yeah, the, the, the build instructions are coming up next. So this is everything that's included with Hermes. There are two bases, one which is N-type, one which is SMA. You choose which one uh, you want when you order. There will also be two different fronts available. One of them is mesh core branded. Uh, the other one uh, is plain with just my logo. The battery holder comes pre-soldered uh, with the connector, uh, which then connects to the power switch. And then there's a cable that then connects from the power switch to the rack. You will want to make sure to use uh, balanced, charged, equally charged 18650 cells uh, before you first uh, start using Hermes. Hermes is constructed using 18 millimeter stainless steel, uh, marine stainless steel, in fact, uh, hex bolts, uh, together with these small uh, M3 square nuts. Now these nuts are inserted at various places around uh, the body. So there's six positions uh, in the front of the case, and then there is two here at the bottom uh, of the back casing. To insert the nuts, you're going to need a small pair of pliers, uh, and then it's just a case of getting your nut in the pliers and then inserting it into the hole and pressing it in like so. And now we just have to repeat that process for the other seven uh, in the body. They are slightly fiddly, so it will take a bit of patience. There you go, so that's the uh, square nuts inserted into the main body. Now, if you did order 
the mounting plate, uh, which is in place at the moment on the back of this uh, unit. That does have four extra uh, square nuts that insert on the outer uh, of the case here. So we'll insert those whilst we're at it. Right, Chris from the future here, just a quick note about these nuts. It's vital that when they're inserted, they're properly aligned. Now, if you look into the nut hole and you see there's a little bit of plastic in there from printing, that can cause the nut to not seat properly in the hole. And then that will cause your bolt to misalign and maybe even cross thread, which can be a bit of a problem. So you want to make sure before you insert those nuts that you look into the holes and use a pair of tweezers, maybe a little craft knife, to just cut out, pull out any of those little bits of plastic uh, before you insert those nuts. So remember to do that. There we have it. So that's all the square nuts inserted. Now we can insert our battery tray, which simply goes into the top and pushes in. Now to install our switch, we first take our button. Uh, it only goes in one way, which is with the dot pointing this way. Push this in like that. Then we take our switch PCB and we slide it in, making sure that the, um, uh, the, the switch slides into the hole on the button. I was lucky there, it just went in first time. We then take our um, PCB retaining piece, it goes over the top like so, and then there are two 10 millimeter M3 hex bolts uh, I provide. A little Allen key for inserting these, but I can cheat because I've got an electric screwdriver, which I highly rec recommend. This is a hotter. There you go, a little quicker with an electric, and you'll find your switch works like so. Now, before you install the board, you want to get your Bluetooth antenna uh, that came with your rack. Uh, this one's been used before, but you peel off the adhesive backing and then it sticks into this slot here. This slot is, um, it basically thins the outer casing to make sure that the, uh, the signal for the Bluetooth is as strong as possible. I'm going to be installing a rack 19.03, uh, but it will fit a 19.07 and there are the mounting points there for it. What you want to do is get your rack into position and then take the included screws and you will need a screwdriver for this which was on my desk and there are with the 1903 there are three screw positions with the 1907 I believe there are four so that is the rack installed we can attach our battery cable to the switch. And then we want to take our uh, cable to attach to the rack. Now note the colors of the cables. And you'll see the polarity of this cable red side goes to the red dot on the rack like so you can then connect your bluetooth antenna so there is a mounting position for the rack gps chip if you don't want to use that however it does kill battery life i will point that out so now we can add our tpu gasket which stops water ingress, of course. Now, depending on uh, whether you've got the SMA uh, or the N-type, uh, we need to add our base. So this is a case of passing the coax from, from uh, either the SMA or the N-type through this hole. 
and you want to position the base and the bottom together like so and then you can insert your 18 mils for the two holes in the bottom and again cheat with the old electric now what I would say is do not um, do not fully tighten these for the moment because we don't want to compress the gasket just yet until we've got the front front installed. Um, now it's just a case of attaching the coax to the rack board itself. Again, these are very fiddly. These little IPEX connectors. So it may take a bit of manipulating. So to add a solar panel, you just take the cable uh, that I include, uh, get yourself a solar panel from uh, Amazon, one that say uh, powers a doorbell. I tried a six watt panel, uh, which here in the UK worked quite well. Um, you simply cut that cable, um, trim this cable a little, and I'm including these little crimp connectors uh, where you will just insert red into one, the red from your solar panel into it, and then you simply squeeze it shut to connect the two cables together. You'll then basically run this cable in through the hole in the bottom. connect it to the board like so and I provide there's two cable tie points and I'm providing the small cable ties here there's one here and one over here so that you can secure the cable uh, to, to relieve any strain on it as well then it's just a case of inserting your batteries. Now, if you're in the UK, um, I have actually partnered up with a, a chap that sells really high quality uh, cells um, on Amazon. Uh, there'll be a link uh, to those in the description. Now, one small tip before you install the front is to take one of the 18 millimeter uh, M3 uh, bolts and just go through, go around each hole uh, on the front and make sure that the nut properly engages uh, threads with the with the bolt. Um, if they don't, it's basically because you've not inserted the nut far enough, uh, in which case you just need to put a bit more pressure on it to insert it into the uh, into the hole. So now it's just a case of installing the front. Now, it's important not to over tighten these screws. Um, there should be a small gap all the way, ar all the way around. Um, if you look, this is roughly about equal. This corner is probably a little bit too tight. This corner probably needs slightly more. But it should be a uniform gap of probably just under a millimeter all the way around. And that, that makes sure that the, um, the gaskets are compressed properly. Then it's just a case of tightening the two bottom screws. And you're done.